Pineapples have been a hot topic in Taiwan news ever since China suddenly banned Taiwanese pineapple imports in March. Before the ban was announced, most Taiwanese were unaware of just how much fruit farmers depend on the Chinese market. More than 90 percent of Taiwan's pineapple exports are destined to go across the strait. Because of that, the loss of the Chinese market is no small threat to the livelihoods of farmers down south. But the question is, why don't they sell pineapples elsewhere? It turns out they're trying, but the road to new markets is paved with hurdles. We get a close look at these challenges in our Sunday special report. Folded cardboard boxes pile up high next to this pineapple field. They're all labeled with the same words in simplified Chinese, Taiwan Golden Diamond Pineapples. Usually, by this point in March, these boxes would be on their way to China packed with Taiwanese pineapples. But this year, they are just lying in storage. On February 26, China announced a ban on Taiwanese pineapple starting March 1st, saying pests had been found on the fruit. Taiwan's Council of Agriculture immediately convoked a press conference on the issue. Taiwan's pineapple exports to China and to 16 other countries all abide by WTO international trade regulations. If the shipments seem to contain any of three kinds of scale insects, they can simply be fumigated and put up for sale straight after. That's something Japan has done in the past. The COA responded quickly to China's surprise announcement. After all, pineapples are Taiwan's premier fruit export and 90% of the exports go to China. The ban rattled the Taiwanese public, who immediately leapt to action to soften the blow by buying local pineapples. Over in Pingdong, pineapple farmer Hong Ming Song lamented that the ticking time bomb of China had exploded at last. It's a fear that would float up in my mind sometimes. Since three or four years ago, every day I have been afraid that this would come true. The first to feel the impact of the cross-strait fruit war was Pingdong. That's because out of Taiwan's 40,000 tons of pineapple exports, 30,000 tons are grown in the county. But why do local pineapple farmers rely so much on the Chinese market? Pingdong Commissioner Pan Mong An weighs in. Fruit farmers in the early days, over the past six, seven years, pineapple prices have been very stable. Farmers depended too much on short-haul shipping because short-haul trips have lower quarantine standards and you could get your fruit to China quickly. Taiwan can export pineapples to China tariff-free and shipping requires just three days. In contrast, Japanese imposes tariffs of 17 percent with longer shipping times and stricter quarantine regulations. For instance, in the past, we offered Japanese orders to some co-ops. They said it was a big hassle and that they'd rather not. Although the purchase price was good and the volume too, they said all the production and transportation chains would have to be redesigned and the packaging would have to meet Taiwan's stringent standards. Of course, Japan would also have to send someone to inspect the processing plants in Taiwan. They'd send over a customs inspection official. That's why farmers weren't willing to take the orders. China was the main export market for Taiwan pineapples, and it is still the main destination for Taiwanese sugar apple and wax apple exports. As the saying goes, putting all one's eggs in one basket is never a good idea. So why aren't more Taiwanese fruits exported to more markets like the US, Canada and Australia? Taiwan is hailed as the kingdom of fruit, but for Taiwan to sell fruits abroad, it must first overcome two technical hurdles import quarantines and cold chain logistics. Now, one of the most talked about markets is Australia. 
but Australia's regulations are very different from that of other countries in two respects. Firstly, they are a non-epidemic area, so they are extremely cautious about scale insects. They don't want to let a pest to enter the country through our pineapples. So first of all, they require pineapples to be decrowned. After many years of talks, Australia finally announced it would allow the import of Taiwanese pineapples, albeit with strict import requirements. The pineapples would need to be decrowned and fumigated before leaving Taiwan. But these two processes drastically reduce the fruit's shelf life. Before the pandemic, air freight was about 70 NT per kilogram. Now it's 300 NT. It's a very high cost. So we're hoping to develop new ways to transport the pineapple by sea. That's the only way for them to be competitive. Marine shipping costs less, but since the pineapples are fumigated, the quality and the shelf life are limited. This is a technical hurdle we haven't yet overcome. Another challenge is cold chain logistics. During the entire shipping process, the pineapples must be stored at between 12 and 15 degrees Celsius. Taiwan, to be honest, if Taiwan wants to be competitive internationally, it needs to set up cold chain logistics systems. Without them, any talk of being competitive is just idle chit chat. Our country should muster up all the power it can to set up pre cooling and pre storage mechanisms at every production site or at every agricultural co op. Only with a comprehensive cold chain transport system can we truly be competitive internationally. In 2019, Taiwan became the first country in Asia to export guavas to the U.S. To prevent pest transfer, the U.S. ruled that the guavas must undergo cold treatment procedures before arrival. That means the fruit has to be stored at below 1 degree Celsius for 17 consecutive days before entering the U.S. market. Before they are put in the containers, we have to lower the temperature to 1 degree Celsius. After they are pre-cooled to one degree, we can pack them up and load them on. The container follows U.S. specifications with components to track the temperature inside the three spots required. A similar process had been set up for jujube exports. A Taiwan-developed cultivar, the Snow Beauty, was exported to the Netherlands for the first time in January this year. The feat was possible thanks to improvements in cold chain technology. It was the same with bananas. We didn't establish a cold chain for them right at the start. That's why in the end, the Philippines and the U.S.'s Dole Food Company replaced us in the Japanese market. Once the fruits are out of Taiwan, they face stiff competition from all over the world. For pineapples, Taiwan's biggest competitor is the MD2 cultivar produced in the Philippines and Central and South America. Compared with Taiwan's golden diamond pineapples, the MD2s are more fibrous and less sweet. But since their size is more consistent and they ripen at the same rate, they've become popular around the world. Exporting pineapples is extremely difficult. At the production stage, we would have to ensure they have a uniform quality. Even after they are harvested, we need to separate them into different types and price them by the box. So it's a very technical process, including the management aspect of it all. At Hong's Orchard, workers are busy as ever harvesting pineapples. Although the China market is gone, there are still Japanese orders to fulfill. Today, workers are filling a cold storage container with pineapples bound for Japan. We're using this as an opportunity to slow down the reflect. We'll start over with storage technology and quarantine technology to try and get our fruits, be they guavas, pineapples or wax apples, sold all around the world. Don't underestimate us. Taiwanese farmers are looking to become more competitive in the global market. For that to happen, though, the subsidies offered by the government must be put to good use. With hard work and good luck, the pineapple crisis could mark a new epoch in Taiwan's fruit industry.